Are we live? We're going live. We're live. We're just cooking this something up and we're live. All right. This is going to be great. Oh my goodness. I love how we get to go in and see everybody's shops. You know, I love, I, it's, it's so, it's so cool. This is your, uh, where is this shop, Miles? It's, uh, it's in my basement. It's right under my house, North Country Way. This is your basement shop. Yep. Wow. Yeah, wow. I got a, I got a few more fun clarinet tools here than I do uh, at the at the shop at the School of Music. So, uh, so decided to do it from here. This guy has shops all over the place. His shops have shops. Yeah, yeah he's got a shop yeah. within a shop. Yeah. He's it's got a shop out in the garage that his basement shop uses when it's when it's too busy down there. So, <laughs> yep. Wow, man. Wow. So you have like multiple tooling. Yeah. I mean, you um, have this, yeah. This is this is all mine, and I do. Um, I tell people I only do clarinets. Um, Sats and oboes managed to find their way in here once in a while, but uh, I bet. Uh, yeah, so I got like so like really specialized clarinet stuff here, and then um, at, uh, Crane, it's mostly a PC shop, playing condition shop. So um, they do everything. I mean, I'm doing a viola one minute and a tuba the next, and I gotta do I gotta do all the instruments over there. That's awesome. You're my hero, Miles. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks. I love it. I love it. I want to see. I want to be able to. I want to watch this thing and see if I can get onto the live stream. So. Who's going to interrupt Miles with questions? Me or you, Ryan, or both of us? Uh, can, I can do it. I don't mind interrupting. Okay. All right. And I see that I. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I didn't realize that was a joke. I was like, oh, geez. Hey, can, let's start. Okay. Let, what do you think, Ryan? Can we get started? I think so. I think. I think. I think we're. Okay. Uh, we're good let's to go. do it. Three, two, one, go. Do it. All right, Miles. Let's start. Let's let's get let's get this show on the road. Enough enough dilly dally. Can if I can, Miles, I'm going to just take a second and introduce you as as much as I can. I know you're too great for my terrible introduction, but I'm going to do I'm going to do my best. Um, so you and I, I think we met at a Napper convention in 2008. I know that's true because I'd never remember we talked about that, and uh, and that was your first Napper convention. Yep, you were kind of like a little baby, but you had already had, uh, you had a degree in education. And at that time you were studying instrument repair at Red Wing. And uh, I, it's hard to remember all that we talked about because there may have been Renton. some, or Renton, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, thanks, thank you. Sorry, Renton, I didn't mean to say that. Um, uh, so you were studying instrument repair at Renton and, um, and I know that at that, we talked a lot about repair and I know that we had some delicious uh, libations throughout the, throughout the week as we have continued to. And, um, and I guess, and then, and, then, and then after that, you know, I, when I look at your life as a whole miles, the kind of the thing that really stands out to me is this like continuing education, like what you've done to educate people, to educate yourself. You, you just continue like from that moment on, you you were you were in school. You had a degree. I met you, and then you continued to do so much. You you um, as like we met at an Africa convention, and you went on to teach regional conventions, which are awesome and a great way to bring to teach the people around you. Like what a cool sharing event! You teach the people right around you to do what you do best. It's it's awesome. And and then from there, you went on and taught uh, national conventions, and you've 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 taught several national conventions. In fact, I think you've taught the last five national conventions that we've had for Napper. And that's an amazing accomplishment. Those take a long time and, and man, it's, it's really great that you, that, you, that you do this. And you've taught clinics uh, in the US, around the world. You've taught in uh, Australia, Belgium. I mean, the list just goes on and on. It's awesome, Miles. You are, you are a superstar. Um, so as far as education goes, you're still teaching. Now you're at Potsdam. You teach repair at Potsdam and all those kids benefit from your uh, in-house repair shop at the college, right? So you're the full-time teacher at Potsdam and you're repairing all those instruments. Um, you're teaching a course there and then you run another, you run North Country Winds out of your, out of your house, right? Yep. And people are shipping instruments to you from all over the world and you're repairing them and mailing them back out. Um, free shipping over a hundred dollars folks. So get that thing packed up and get it sent over to miles. And, um, and, and then on top of all this, you're just, I, I, I understand you're just finishing up your, uh, your MBA. So 
I mean, wow, Miles, bravo. That is really an amazing, uh, just to get to this point, I wonder what you're going to do next. <laughs> so congratulations. And, and, then, and then thanks for coming here. And thanks for, thanks for sharing with us today. You're going to talk about uh, pinning a clarinet. And, um, and we're looking forward to you. So I'll stop talking and let you talk and, and, and go. Thanks, Miles. Cool. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, I've really been enjoying watching these sessions. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for having me on. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a carbon fiber pin. That's my preferred way to pin a clarinet. Um, I like it because it's less invasive to the instrument. Um, kind of a traditional way, and it's still it's a very good way to pin a clarinet is to put that threaded metal wire into it. A lot of people do it that way with great results, and that's totally fine. Personally, I think if you can get the same result to really stabilize that crack in the clarinet and do less things to the instrument, make less changes to it, have it as close as it was before the crack. When it gets back to the player, I think that's a good thing. And I think we can accomplish that by doing carbon fiber pinning instead of pinning with the threaded metal wire. Um, so that's why I like to do it that way. Um, I really like the way you guys have the website set up. It's so easy to buy all the things that you need to carbon fiber pin an instrument. Just go on the shop and get it. I like the uh, 060 size. You've got the exact right size drill bit right there. You don't have to look up what size drill bit you need for that. So um, yeah, that's that's where I get awesome. my stuff and yeah, and I do all kinds of carbon fiber pins on, like you said, on clarinets from uh, from all over North America, really. So um, this is how I do it. Um, one thing I'll be doing. A lot of people find this odd that I pin this way, um, but there's a guy named Larry Mueller that I studied with. And he, um, he doesn't have much use of his legs. So nothing with a foot switch is really much help to him. So he doesn't use a bench motor. He just uses just a regular old cordless drill. So just, um, I am lucky to have full use of my legs, but just studying with him, it's like, okay, here's how he does it. This is how I'm gonna do it. So I use it and, um, and it's kind of a nice thing, like you said, with like kind of furthering education. I hear a lot of people say, oh, I'm not set up to do pinning. Well, really, I mean, if you can get one of these at the hardware store for a hundred bucks or so, you, you really can easily be set up to do it. Um, nice. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I got two cameras going here. So hopefully at least my hands aren't in the way of one of them at all times. Um, so I'll kind of show you what I got going on here. Um, just a few tools I'm gonna use. I got my carbon fiber rod ready to go. I've got an automatic center punch, um, number 52 drill bit pencil, and I almost guarantee I won't need it, but I've got um, uh, just a Grenadilla wood dust here in case I need extra dust. But something I really like to do is um, put, just put down a towel and save all the dust that I kick up and use that as my dust to put back into the instrument when I'm sealing up uh, and kind of masking the work and making it look as close to uh, like it never had a crack as possible. Um, so got uh, just a scrap clarinet here. Um, got a crack. Um, you guys let me know, can you see that crack right there? Uh, you can bring it a, maybe a little bit closer. There we go. Yeah, there, yeah, it, there is. it is. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I tried to dig into it a little bit to make it more, um, <laughs> more of a, more of a crack there. This is a scrap joint. I've done all kinds of experiments too. So blow this thing up during this, this session. No, no problem at all. It's uh, <laughs> don't, don't really need it for anything. So the first thing I like to do is plan out where my, um, pins are going to go. So I just take my pencil and draw where I want the pins to go. And sometimes I might erase it two, three, four times as I work my way down the instrument, deciding where I want the pins to go to make sure I'm avoiding any uh, tone holes or posts or trill key guides. So I'm going to start out with planning um, where I would do the pins on this crap. And um, I'm just, I'm li I like to, uh, I like to put the pins in diagonal. I feel like you get a little bit better grip that way. So, uh, there you go. Yeah. So there we go. I'm like, okay, maybe about three pins. Uh, in you're going to put, so you're going to put three pins in there. Yeah. That's how I would normally do it. Um, I'll probably only do one today. Cause I mean, if you see me put one pin in, you've seen me put them all in. Um, it's the, it's the, <laughs> exact same thing every time. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I'll just do one here probably. And then I'll, I wanna make sure I leave some time to get to uh, how I like to uh, sand everything and blend it and make it look as close to like it never happened as possible. Cool. 
Cool. Yeah. Is there is how close to the tone hole do you get with that? Is um, there a rule I, about that? If there is, I don't you know what it is. Um, I, okay. I, I I get as close as I as I can without um you know feeling feeling like I'm gonna uh, you know risk going into it. Um, okay. Yeah, and um, if the crack goes into the tone hole, I'll replace the tone hole with um, uh, with ABS. Um, so yeah, this is so this is a Coca Bolo clarinet, so you can really see see the difference in there. That doesn't bother me though. It's got the um, uh, it's going to have the D over it, so you won't really right. be able to see that that tone hole is way different. So yeah. So did you pin is, that one and replace the tone hole? Um, I haven't, I, I haven't pinned this one actually. I use it as a demo for um, carbon fiber band. A lot of people ask about that. Oh, uh, okay. Um, so, and I just did it on a Coca Bolo scrap joint just because you can see it better. Um, right. I don't like the carbon fiber band nearly as much as pinning. Um, okay. I, I, obviously, on a red clarinet, it looks, it's very, very noticeable. Um, even if it was a Grenadilla clarinet, it's still going to be fairly noticeable. Those blacks are never going to really blend together. Um, so um, I will only do a uh, carbon fiber band if I absolutely have to. Um, Is it purely that, aesthetics why you don't like it um, as much? I think pins hold a little bit better in my personal opinion, mm -hmm. um, but uh, also aesthetics and also you're doing less to the clarinet by pinning it. So less changes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So here's a good example. This bell like somebody dropped off like the empire state building or something it was just absolutely destroyed um should never have been put back together but i was like i'm gonna see if i can do it so the bell the bell walls are really thin so there's no way you could pin those so i put five carbon fiber bands on that and it's actually holding together pretty well i'm kind of surprised wow yeah wow yeah so that's an example of a time when um just uh, there's no way you could pin that there's not enough wood there. So that's a time when it's like, well, it's carbon fiber band or nothing. Yep. <laughs> that's cool. Thanks for showing us that. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I'm going to take my automatic center punch and I'm going to punch a hole at the beginning of where I want each pin to go. I usually give it three punches. It's just a little spot to uh, get them started. So now I've got um, I have somewhere for the uh, drill to grab onto when I start drilling into it. And um, I like to do blind pins. So what that means is I'm not going to drill all the way through. Um, again, kind of back to my base philosophy on this, I want to make as little changes to the instrument as possible. If I drill all the way through, I doubled how many holes I'm putting in the instrument. So I personally don't want to do that. So I do, do blind holes. Um, just, um, so I'm only, put it, I'm only drilling three holes into the instrument instead of six mm -hmm. in this case. So I got my number 52 drill bit loaded up and I'm going to drill straight into the instrument for, uh, oh, about a half second or so. I'm going to do like a plunge straight in. Okay, and that's it. I'm just doing that just a little bit just so the drill bit can grab onto it. Otherwise, you know, I'm drilling onto something that's round, it's likely to just skip off the side. So I've got that started. And now I'm going to drill and I'm just gonna kind of follow my pencil line. So I'm just gonna follow oh, yeah. where that pencil and my drill is gonna go right underneath that inside the instrument. And I usually do two or three passes on this um, just because I don't, again, I don't want to change things. I don't want to heat that up too much. So I'll kind of pull the drill out, check out, see what's going on. I'll always do at least two. 
just so it's not so much pressure on the instrument as you're plunging this rapidly rotating piece of metal into the wood. Um, it's bad, already bad enough that we have to do that. So I want to make it as gentle on the instrument as possible. Yeah, and again, I'm saving my dust here because I'm going to use that later. So I'm not just blowing it all over the shop. I'm keeping the keeping the dust because I'm going to want to use that to uh, to beautify things at the end as the last. Hmm. So I would normally go go ahead and um, uh, drill two more holes, just following the pencil lines exactly like that. I like to drill all the holes at once while I have my drill out. Then I put all the pins in at once. Then I beautify everything at once, just to kind of make things more streamlined. So I've got that hole ready to go. So uh, hold on, Miles. Just yeah. on your drill. I'm sorry, but on your drill, like, how are you deciding? Uh, maybe you said it. I didn't. But you're not putting like tape or anything on the drill bit to show how deep it is. You're just nope. just going at it, and and you're and you know it's not going to come out the other side. Yep. Yep. That's it. That's it. And it's you know, and it's not the worst thing in the world if it does come out the other side. Um, that a lot of people purposely have it come out the other side. Um, right. So, right. Yeah. So it's no big deal. It's just one more hole to clean up. Um, but I just I, I like to avoid that one extra hole in the uh, musician's instrument. Just my my personal philosophy. I think the pin does a great job of holding without going through all the way. OK, and you just eyeball it with the bit. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And I can, you know, cool. and you, you can always kind of check it out too. you know, be like, OK, well, how far into that go and then kind of lay it on top you can see where the dust is built up so you're like oh, okay i'm going you know i'm covering the crack I'm, and it I'm, and it's exactly the same angle as it would be if you were not doing a blind hole like correct it, you you're 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 aiming for coming out on equal side opposite the scrap opposite the crack yes correct okay yeah yep. okay cool thanks miles yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, oh, and yeah, and a, a good question I got once. Um, thank you. That reminded me of um, something somebody asked once. They're like, "Well, how do you know how far from the crack to start?" And I was like, "You know, I have no idea how to explain that to somebody. I just, I just kind of do it." Um, I looked up. Um, there's like a calculation you can make if you um, look up how to um, pin cracks in the Reg Thorpe Woodwind Repair Manual. Um, huh. I found it very, very complicated and confusing. The explanation. So I just started measuring them every time I did it, and I was almost always seven millimeters from the crack on a flare die. Huh. Yeah. Cool. So if you're just, just if you're just getting into it, my my main recommendation would be get a scrap clarinet and experiment, see what works good for you. But if you are not able to do that, that's me measure about seven millimeters from the crack. Cool. Hey, since we're talking about it, can we see yours again? Just see where see where you drilled in compared to where that crack is. And where's the crack? Roll it up. There it is. Oh yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And Thanks, Mom. Yep. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. All right. So I got my carbon fiber rod. Um, I like to have a nice smooth surface. So um, I just stick it in my lathe real quick and um, just sand the end of it, part that's going to go in. Um, you have to sand it every time anyway, because um, after I uh, after you cut off a chunk of it, there's going to be a little bit of residual super glue on it. So you have to you have to sand it up in your lathe or bench motor um, every time anyway. But what I'm going to do is put that in that hole that I just drilled, and so I got it sticking right out there, right? Back to the pencil, and I'm going to draw right where the pin meets the hole. I've got a mark now on it. And I need that mark because I need to cut a little slot there so that when I fully install the pin and glue it in, I can break it off right at the correct spot. So to put the slot in there, I need to take it back to my lathe. Um, so I'll take the, um, the second camera over there and show you how I cut the slot. Um, 
And um, yeah, you probably won't be able to hear me from the second camera, but it'll be fairly self-explanatory. I just, uh, I'm gonna chuck it in my lathe. I'm gonna take my jeweler saw and I'm gonna aim for thawing in um, about one third of the way through the rod. I'll narrate for you, Miles, if we have to. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. Be like golf narrators. Okay, and Miles is walking over to the lathe. <laughs> had to walk. Had to walk past that, that Z gun, that nice Z gun, and the air torch. I saw that Z gun and the air torch. <laughs> Passes yeah. by. Right? Yeah, well, he's. That's what he would be talking about if, if he could talk. If he could, yeah, he'd be bragging he about the air torch and the Z gun. Well, can you see that? Okay? Can we? We can. Uh, and can you bring that camera closer? I mean, we no. North. north yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, the answer is no. Ang angle it up. Um, north yeah, north. I can actually. <laughs> The, the tripod won't uh, fit around the wave. Uh, -oh. uh okay. So the lathe is spinning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the lathe is spinning. Coming at it. We all know what's going on here. He's coming at it with a jeweler saw blade. Oh, he's sawing it. He's using the back and forth slow technique, the back, the short back and forth technique. Okay. As opposed to the the, the longer saw strokes. Yeah, and, and not a cutoff tool. He just used the blade. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I would have maybe yeah. used a cutoff tool. Maybe that's why I shouldn't be doing crack pinning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we're back. And yep. We're back. All right. So um, I aimed for um, just cutting a, a little slot there. I aimed for about a third of the way through. Um, doesn't really matter if that's not exact. Can you see that? Yes. Yep. There it is. Yep. yep. We're notch. Yep. So um, I did that right, um, right at below where the pencil line is. So hopefully the whole thing will just disappear once I uh, put it in and break off the rest of the carbon fiber rod. Cool. So I'm going to take my thin uh, music medic uh, Instacure um, there. Um, Super glue wears out. I feel like some people keep bottles of super glue on their bench for like two or three years. Man, the stuff doesn't stick nearly as well. I really appreciate that you guys sell the little bottle of this. A lot of places sell the bottle that's twice the size of this. I've never even gone through this size bottle before throwing it out and just opening it. That's a it. good point. Yeah. That's glue, a good, yeah. yeah. Smaller glue, bottles. Super glue is so cheap. Throw, throw it out and uh, just, just open a new one. Um, yeah, I've heard of people like putting it in their freezer to make it last longer. Like, there's, there, you don't need to do that. Super glue is only a few bucks. Just, just buy a new bottle. Treat yourself. You know, buy, <laughs> buy, buy yourself a new bottle. Just some delicious music medic super glue. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna put a drop or two of super glue into that hole that I drilled. Nice camera work, Ryan. Thank you. Yeah, I've been working on this. I've been waiting all day. Got up early for this. You're doing. <laughs> I, I have no idea if this does anything or not, but I tap it a few times just to kind of make sure that it, you know, put some vibration through it, have the super glue get everywhere that it needs to go. I don't know if that actually does anything. It makes me feel better though, so I do it. Um, next, I'm going to put the pin in and break it off. I'm surprised you talk that much with the super glue in there. I would be oh, freaking I out. I like, live dangerously. The pin in there. I like to live dangerously, wow. man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's in there. It's secure. And is your is your little is your is your cut kind of a gauge so you know it's all the way in, or is your hole big enough that it just slid in and you know it's in because it bottomed out? So, because it bottomed out. You felt it bottom out. Yep, yep. Exactly. Okay. And now I'm gonna break it off at that notch. There we go. We've got a pin. Oh, yeah. Looks like my zombie costume for Halloween. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, good. <laughs> yeah, and I would go through and do that two more times. Um, but um, yeah, I wanted to make sure that um, I save time um, so I can show um, just how I like to kind of mask things and make it look, make that. Um, repair as close to invisible as I can possibly get it. So um, I guess uh, I guess a good cool. point time for um, if there's any questions about the pinning process, if you want to do those now, or we can save all questions for later. 
We did have uh, some questions when you right. when you first went over and you were talking about the blind hole. Somebody asked if you would drill all the way through, and you kind of explained why you would just do that blind hole. Uh, I don't think there's yeah. any other ones, but yeah, that was that was good. Danny mentioned that that had mentioned that hot stuff was really good. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's I, another um, another kind of super glue. Yeah, I've never um, I've never tried it. I know a lot of people like that one too. Yeah, I mean that's, that's something I say. Yeah, use yeah. use whatever works for you. Here's another yeah, question. And, yeah, Joe asked why the thin uh, opposed to the medium glue specifically for the pin. Why um, do you use especially, especially with something like wood? Um, um, just um, so many little, um, I don't know, like um, irregular coastline in there as after mm -hmm. I drill that hole. I want to make sure that the, I've got the thinnest stuff possible um, just so it, it gets everywhere that it needs to get. Um, with anything thicker, I worry about it maybe clumping up and not getting in every last little nook and cranny in the hole. Okay, very cool. Yes, thank yeah. you. Yeah, no problem. All right. So I'm going to kind of switch out some tools here and um, I'm going to do a little line change and bring in the, um, the stuff that I'm going to use to uh, kind of mask everything, make it look good. We need to get some music medic bench mats like that. I'm making a note of this. I should, yes. That's, that's a nice Yamaha bench mat. Man, yeah, I've been thinking about this, this thing a long time ago, and uh, yeah, it's been great. Hmm. <clears throat> Somebody d did ask, uh, how do you know the angle you're drilling won't go through the bore? Uh, experience. Um, experience, practice. Yep. Practice makes perfect. Yep. Um, when I was in repair school, um, I asked if I could purposely drill into the bore on a scrap clarinet. And uh, my teacher was like, absolutely, go for it. It'll be good to know what that's like. I was surprised at what an aggressive angle I had to do to go into the bore. It's actually kind of hard to do because there's a good amount of wood um, with the, on the um, instrument. Um, so, you know, you've got like the shoulder right there, plus all that wood, you know, like that much, plus you've got that. It's actually kind of hard to go all the way through. Um, you've got to get pretty aggressive. Um, I've never, other than that time that I did it on purpose in repair school, I've never gone into the bore. Um, and it's, it's something I don't even think about anymore, honestly. Yeah, um, it, in the early, early days, it would freak me out a little bit, you know, if, like doing this on like an $8,000 clarinet um, and uh, something like that happening. But um, I do it almost every day now and it's, it doesn't bother me. Um, so... I'm gonna take my super glue, and then this is just a little piece of paraffin wax with a little well drilled into it. And I'm gonna put a few drops in my well there. Um, I don't know why, but super glue won't cure when it's in a little paraffin well like that. <laughs> yeah. Ever? Ever. <laughs> ever? Ever, ever. I mean, how, how long does that last, Miles? Um, I have long, long enough to, to do this. I'm not sure. Um, you know, eventually I'll like scrape, okay. scrape some, you know, super glue remnants out of the well and like have to redrill the well, but it'll, it'll take a while. Um, yeah, I could probably, probably an hour at least is safe. Wow. Cool. Um, and I want to get rid of, um, any oils that are on the surface. So I'm just going to take some acetone on a Q-tip. And I'm just gonna kind of dry everything up. I'm gonna oil it again when I'm at the end of this process. So I don't really care that I'm drying out the wood right now. Um, then uh, my very first step, I wanna get rid of all the surface glue. Um, so I'm going to uh, use my triangular scraper here not the world's best, but it'll do, I guess. Okay, yeah. The world, maybe the world's <laughs> second best scraper. The world's second best scraper, yes. It gets the job done. Yeah, so it's all, always darkest before the dawn. I'm making it, I'm making this thing even uglier right now, but it's all for a good cause. We're gonna, it's gonna be really pretty at the end.
All right. So I significantly um, ugly that thing up, right? Okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's going to look nicer oh. in just a few minutes. So I'm going to start out with regular old um, sandpaper. Um, I like 220 because just because that's what I have around what I use on um, uh, and corks. So I'll start out with 220 and I'm just going to sand it until it's a fairly smooth surface. Are you always sanding with the grain? I always sand with the grain. Yep. I know some people who do with the grain then against the grain. Um, for me, I always go with the grain. You're just that kind of guy, Miles. That's right. Go yeah. with the grain. Yep. So you, you scraped off the extra super glue, but you scraped off a little bit other stuff too, kind of around there. Was that just a random scraping or was it like you're kind of digging that area down a bit? Um, just kind of random scraping. Um, as I'm getting like the last little bit of super glue, I'll be digging in a little more to the right. Okay. Area. Okay. Um, but then, um, so after that first pass with sanding, I'm not going to blow that off or anything. I'm going to leave it all right there and I'm going to add super glue to it because that dust is really nice and fine and it's going to work into the holes that I drilled and as well as the crack itself. Hmm. So I've got an old uh, musicmedic.com spring hook here um, and I'm just going to dip that into my well and apply the super glue that way. Hmm. Those yeah, are collectible when they get old. Yeah. yeah. This is a cool is trick. I don't think I've seen this before. This this um, put super glue on the whole thing on the while, during yeah. yeah while, no while you're sanding the wax tricks also no. I'm learning a lot here from them. but I mean like <laughs> just just putting the super glue on the on the whole thing and not just wiping it off as you go and then making it pretty go ahead Mom. sorry no oh, no no you're, oh, yeah. you're fine yeah so it's right there I won't even let that dry all the way honestly before I start um before I start sanding on the first couple passes. You mean you'll sand the super glue and it's even a little bit wet? Yep. Okay. Yeah, just because as I'm sanding it, while it's still a little bit wet, I'm still kicking up some more of that fine dust that's getting added to the things that I want to fill in. So. Have you ever had like a clarinet stuck to your thumb and you had to go to the hospital and have it's like surgically removed or anything? <laughs> no, absolutely not. Because no? okay. a, a person, personal rule of thumb, I will never super glue without Music Medic Uncure. Uncure. Within arms length. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Raise your hand if you haven't showered in that stuff. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so got mine. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I keep it with me. I keep it in the shower just in case. <laughs> so I'm going to do basically the exact same thing I did um, on the first pass of the sand just now. There's super glue on the instrument. Very suspenseful. It is. <laughs> yeah, we don't know what's going to happen. This is gonna live, happen. folks. Anything can happen. Anything. Miles is a trained professional, but we don't know. <laughs> Look at all that sandpaper he's got neatly rolled up in the in the tupper. Look at that thing. It's a dispenser. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So that's the uh, that's my micro mesh actually, and that's mm. uh, that's what we're going to go to next. Nice. So once I got it back to smooth, um, I'm gonna kind of check it out and um, see if there's any like little divots left um, that I still need to fill in. So yeah, coming along pretty good there actually. I can see that there's still a little divot. It's actually um, one of the holes that I, that I did the automatic center punch but I didn't drill through. That's got a little tiny bit of a hole there. So I'm going to add one little dot of super glue to that. Give it a few seconds to dry, then I'll probably do another pass. Um, then I'm going to start working bore oil into the equation. So you're, you're not covering the little, the, you're not sprinkling super glue on there, or you're not sprinkling uh, the dust on there, right? I'm probably not going to have to. Nope. I've got it there in case I need to for some reason. Um, 
you know, it's a piece of wood. So you might have like an irregular shape, like little chip come off and you need to replace that. Um, but I'm probably not going to need to because that's, um, as I'm sanding that that's kicking up the dust anyway. So I'm just incorporating that dust right back into the instrument it came from. Wow. This is interesting, Miles. Usually I've seen like, I mean, I don't do a clarinet work, but I've seen where they dig a hole and you got that hole and you put super glue in and then you put dust in there, make, maybe even mix, like mix it in there in the little hole and press it in and sand it down. You know, this is cool. Yeah. This is, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you know, people who do it that way, they get good, they get great results too. Um, sure. Um, I find this to be more efficient and I find that it, it, you're changing less things on the clarinet. And I just, I always think that's kind of fun. Okay. Cool. So the dust was just a safety net. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, this thing, I, I'm pretty sure I got it from you guys. Um, that's how much I've used in four years of having this shop is, you know, from the top. To wow, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, and most of the time for that, it wasn't on crack pinning. It's when somebody had like a chunk out of a tenon or something like that is usually what I use it for. If you go on YouTube, you can learn to do that with um, ramen noodles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just why don't you just use ramen noodles? Yeah, just use ramen noodles and it would play great. Yeah. Yeah. But it, you know, if you want a snack partway through rehearsal, it's, it's right there. That's right. And you can have a tasty treat. <laughs> OK, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, ready to go on to the yeah. next step, which is going to be almost exactly the same thing. Just instead of super glue, I'm going to use boron. Hmm. Sanding with the oil, like wet sanding and using the oil as your, your liquid. Exactly. Yep. And that's going to help it color match really well. That makes sense because the oil's in there and the little pieces, the little dust particles are falling into the holes and getting oiled in there and that's exactly. their new home. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Wow, Miles, you're, this is really different. You know, you're either going to, a bunch of people are watching this. They're either going to, you're either going to have a fan club or there's going to be a hate Miles Facebook group opening up. Yeah, I think that already exists. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm part of it. Yeah, I'm it. in the, I hate Miles. <laughs> yeah, right. I think Ryan's on the board of directors. So. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're all upset with you. We got a lot of grievances here. <laughs> Leroy asks, do you use any specific type of bore oil? Um. I do I like some kind of almond oil? Uh, my personal favorite is um, the Bakun's almond oil blend. Um, I'm a Bakun dealer. I get all I stock all kinds of stuff from them, um, and I really like this oil, so I always get a few of these Very to cool. keep on hand as yeah. well. Maury was watching earlier. He said hello. Oh, okay. Glad to see, see the clarinet, clarinet love. Yeah, nice. Yeah. All right, so I um, think I'm done with the regular old sandpaper. We're getting there. You know, still kind of ugly, but it's closer. I am going to go to micro mesh now. And so I'm going to 1500 grit. Same deal. I'm going to put a coat of bore oil on it. And this is probably the biggest difference when I go um, the past when I do the sandpaper and then do the first one with micro mesh, that's, that's going to be the biggest difference where it starts to kind of look like, oh, there, there's hope of this blending in after all. 
So the first one you used with the bore oil was was what grit? Uh, 220. 220, and now you're up. Now you're at 1500. Yep. I'll wait. I'll wait for the. Don't tell your friends about the surprise in. <laughs> So what do we got? Hey, that is a big difference. Yeah, that's going to be the biggest that's difference true. right there. Uh, probably a little easier to tell in person wow. that it's still, you know, it still needs some, still needs some work, but uh, yeah. That's the biggest difference right there. And now we go up to um, really, really, really high grits uh, <laughs> sand of a uh, micro mesh. Um, let's see, I do, uh, my typical order is 1500, 2400. 3,200 and 6,000. Wow, okay, cool. And you, you always end out with like 6,000 on a wood yep. clarinet. Yep. I guess it's always a wood clarinet that breaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I could see the area on the screen that you were sanding, you know? Um, uh -huh. when you showed it and, and I know you, you got more sanding to go, but what I, I couldn't see was the holes. Yeah. Can, can, can you see them now? Um, and once I dry it, I will be able to, if the light gets it this way. Okay. Like it's a little shinier. Yeah, exactly. Cause it's got the super from the super. Glue. Yeah. I wonder if we could get matte super glue. Have you ever used the black stuff yes. that has the rubber mixed in? Yes. Yeah, right. How, how is that for this process? Um, I, um, I, I like it, um, but I'll usually only use that if I've got like a really big hole for something. Um, so, so really not for this process if I'm filling in wood on a clarinet but for a different reason. Um, okay. I like, I like how it's way more flexible than the thin super yeah. glue, um, but it's just, uh, I think it's too thick to get everywhere that I want it to go. Um, so it's got, a, okay. it's got a place for sure, but um, just not not for um, this particular process. Yep, yep. Okay, so that's after 2400. Oh yeah, that's looking good. Um, yeah, but for bore oil, I like um, I like something natural, like an almond oil. Um, anything that's like petroleum based or anything like that, uh, just toss it in the garbage. Don't don't be putting that on the wood. Um, that's not going to be good for it. Um, I would rather see somebody go to like a Whole Foods and just buy pure almond oil and use that as bore oil rather than some kind of um, petroleum based thing. <laughs> What about Trader Joe's? Is that okay? Can I go to Trader, Trader Joe's? Trader Joe's also acceptable. Okay. Yeah. I was worried there. Yeah. <laughs> You're a weirdo, Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <Yeah. laughs> I can't afford Whole first Foods. First yeah. yeah. Be being in Potsdam, we don't have to worry about um, which fancy grocery store to go to because we have none. So. Yeah. What about, about Wegmans? Can I go to Wegmans? We don't. Don't, don't even... Don't even have Wegmans. I got. What about a Piggly Wiggly? We got Piggly uh, Wigglies down here. Oh yeah, yeah. we love that's some a that's a Wiggly. southern thing, isn't it? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Big meat section. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kurt, yeah. Kurt never's been there. No, I don't, I don't go. <laughs> I, I don't. No go. idea. <laughs> All right, that's after thirty-two hundred. Wow, yeah, that's looking yeah. great. I could honestly probably leave it like that right now, but let's, let's do six thousand just to be sure. Yeah, these people paid full price miles. All right, right. all right. All right, yeah. Let's give them the whole, let's, let's do the whole thing. My, micro mesh is very, very expensive. So uh, they're, they're getting their money's worth out of this. So. <laughs> this is great, Miles. I learned a lot during this and, and, uh, and, and, and you have a really different approach. It's, 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 uh, it's cool. It's cool to see. I, I, these, these videos that we do on these Wednesdays, we get right into people's places and we get to see how they do it. And, and everybody's developed their own 
subtle differences to known techniques. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yep, there it is. Yep. Yeah. So um, I would uh, put a really thin coat of uh, bore oil just over the spot that I've been sanding. Um, I'd even wipe, just wipe it off with a paper towel. And then I would leave it to sit overnight because I feel like that gives it that last little like one or two percent of blending power or something like that. Um, and, <laughs> yeah. Then I'd uh, put it back together and play it and make sure everything works and uh, check it on the leak tester and send it on its way. Cool. We do have a, a, a quick question here. Danny asked, uh, he likes almond oil too, but he once had a request for somebody to use um, something else because they had nut allergies. Uh, what do you recommend as a synthetic alternative? Um, I have, um, I have hmm. heard um, that the nut oils don't, um, don't have an impact for some reason. I can't remember why that is, okay. even on somebody who has nut allergies. Um, I am not a doctor. I can't verify that. Um, I, I have heard that before. Um, I don't have a good recommendation for something synthetic, um, but I'd be really curious to hear if anybody did. Um, Interesting. Yeah. 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 I can't remember. I can't remember who said that. They, they, they even told me why it doesn't have an impact on somebody with nut allergies. But um, yeah, don't take my word for that. Though, you know. Okay. Apparently, according to Dr. Miles, it's safe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what you're saying is, go ahead and use the nut oil, okay. and um, if anything happens, you take full responsibility. Yeah, if anything happens, yeah. God, take, take more of it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> awesome, Miles. That's awesome. Is uh, do we do we have any do we have any more uh, questions, Ryan? I think that was about it. Everybody, yeah. Everybody says great work, excellent job. We're all talking about you. We're all saying great things. Okay. Everybody's talking about you, Miles. Everybody's talking about you. Everybody's saying great things. So, yeah, awesome. That was that was great. That was great, Miles. And and uh, and thanks for coming out here. I, I I have a list. I'll tell you my list. I have it. I'll tell you. So I'm gonna get. A, we need an automatic center punch at Music Medic, and I learned that from you. And I'm gonna look and see if those super glue bottles are available even smaller. Because oh, that's it. That would be cool. Because I agree, you never use the whole thing. I don't even use half, but I really don't work. Um, then the, the yeah. bench mat. I'm gonna I'm gonna copy your bench mat. I'm gonna see if I can get some company that makes giant um, uh, uh, mouse pads. And um, and uh, that's and I'm gonna look and see if super glue comes in any kind of mat. I never asked that question or or research that, but I'm gonna research that and see if there's a a super glue that dries with a matte finish. I wonder if that's a, I, wonder, <laughs> I don't know that that's possible. Whatever they do to paint to make it matte. Uh, I'm gonna just look into that. Okay. Um, right. So cool, Miles, that, that was really great. That was really a great, a great clinic and so, or a great presentation and so clearly laid out of how to do it and, and your technique. And thanks for bringing us in and sharing it with us. And thanks for sharing your expertise with the world through through napper through your teaching at the college through through things like this your everything that you do it's it's awesome and you're wonderful and we're all better for it so thanks thanks for that thanks for today cool thank you for having me this was great cool thanks ryan thanks for doing it and for everybody out there thank you for tuning in and we'll see you on friday we'll do a video and we'll see you next week at a wednesday wisdom i think me and ryan are doing that one yeah, we're, we're not going to do crack pinning because Miles already took that. So there, there goes. Yeah, that. we were going to do. Yeah, we were going to do it, but it's like, well, okay. Yeah, we'll do saxophone. We'll talk about saxophone. Then. Talk about saxophone. So. <laughs> Again. Again. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Miles. That was that was awesome. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank thanks. you, Miles. All right. Here's our awkward goodbye. Everybody wave. Okay. Bye bye. All right. See ya.